Well, Kyren Horman was just seven years old when he vanished from school, never to be seen again. This month marks 10 years since his disappearance, and we are taking a fresh look at the case in today's DBL's True Crime Chronicles. June 4, 2010. It's the day Oregon's largest search began for a missing seven-year-old boy, Kyron Horman. Normal went away on June 4th, and every day we adjust. We try to survive that night. I never thought in a million years we will be here in 10 years, never. It's sad and it's disappointing and frustrating. On that June morning in 2010, Chiron's stepmother, Terry Horman, dropped him off at Skyline Elementary School in Northwest Portland. He was seen at the school that morning, excited about attending the school science fair that day. But when his parents went to meet him at the bus stop after school, he was missing. I think he was taken from school. I don't think he's been in the area. I think he's out of the area somewhere. I think he's with somebody else. Um, and I, I, I still will, will repeat that we don't have enough information to really tell us you know, whether he's alive or not. Chiron's mother believes the stepmother, Terry, is involved. She was the last one to see him. Just tell us, no matter how bad it is, just tell us and end this roller coaster that we're on every single day. A new book titled Boy Missing, The Search for Chiron Horman details shocking claims about the stepmother the day Chiron disappeared. Literally, one of the adults said they weren't holding hands walking out together, but they left the school together. Terry has denied any involvement in the boy's disappearance, but she has admitted to failing lie detector tests about that day. The boy's biological parents haven't given up hope. I know that 10 years later, that's slimmer and slimmer as an option, but I know too that it happens for mothers. It happens, their kids get to come home. Chiron, just a young boy at the time, would have been approaching his 18th birthday. We have missed out on all of the milestones, the proms, learning to drive, his first girlfriend, and this June would be his high school graduation. An entire decade later, the case remains open, but with more questions, than answers. Wow. As a parent, I cannot even imagine. Uh, earlier, Tori spoke with an investigative reporter who's covered this case since day one. Take a look. We're joined by investigative reporter Kyle Eboshi from KGW8 in Portland, Oregon. Thank you, Kyle, for joining us. You've covered this case since the day Kyron went missing. Ten years later, did you really ever think we'd still be here today? And tell us where things stand. Yeah, just like his parents, I figured this case would have been solved by now. You know, police say, listen, this is still an open, active investigation. They're offering a $50,000 reward for information leading to uh, the recovery of Kyron Horman. But the challenge here is time is it's not on their side. I mean, it's been 10 years, yeah. and sadly, a lot of the original detectives and prosecutors in the case have now retired or moved on. That's the worst. There are thousands of missing person cases in the U.S., but this one, Kyle, gained national attention and it prompted the biggest search operation in Oregon. Why do you think personally it spoke to so many people? You're right. Sadly, there are a lot of missing kids out there. I think this case stands out for a couple of reasons. One, he disappeared from school. I mean, as a parent, that's where we hope that our kids are safe, right, yeah. at school. The other thing is, there have been so many twists and turns in this case surrounding the stepmother, Terry Horman, and the family dynamics. People have really been interested in that. But I've got to remind folks, listen, at the end of the day, don't be distracted by all that family drama. This case really is about a missing little boy. That's so true. Now, as you were saying, a new book just came out. The author wrote that witnesses saw the stepmother leave with Kyron and wash his backpack that day. Have police spoken out on these theories at all? And was Terry ever named a suspect or no? So Terry Horman has never been named a suspect or a person of interest by law enforcement. A judge at one point called her a prime suspect. As far as those details who may have seen Kyron coming and going from school, police have been generally pretty vague about that over the years, never confirming specifically who was the last one to see Kyron 
or where. As for Terry Horman, the stepmother, she's now moved to California, has remarried, and maintained her innocence throughout all this. Wow. I'm glad you put the focus back on Kyron. That's what's important here. Thank you so much for your hard work, Kyle. To read more on this case, visit kgw.com. You can also listen to the podcast episode, The Kyron Horman Case, out now. You just search True Crime Chronicles on your favorite podcast player. Kyle, thanks again.